In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions. But the way we open the episode is we talk about our lives, talk about the trips we were on, mention our sponsors. We bring up scientific studies. We get crazy. We have a lot of fun. So here's what went down in today's episode of Mind Pump. I start out by mentioning my kerfuffle at the gym. I made a fool of myself. Kerfuffle. Not the first time, but it's still embarrassing. Then I talked about my trip to Maui uh, with my new wife. We had a good time. Adam talks about the dad life and his lack of fitness. He's getting that dad bod. He's really serious about it. Justin talks about <laughs> He's working on how it. he cut down his caffeine last week. So he went from a million milligrams of caffeine down mm, to half a million. Yeah. So congratulations. Three quarters. I talked about CBD products. Um, I was using one while I was in Maui, and it paled in comparison to the product that we're sponsored by, which is Ned. Now, the difference between Ned and other CBD products is Ned contains high levels of CBD but it's full spectrum, meaning it has other cannabinoids that are similar to CBD also in there. So it's got a much more powerful effect. It's the reason why people who use CBD switch to Ned. It's far more effective. That's why we go with quality, Sal. Now, we have a discount for you. Uh, if you go to Hello Ned, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase with that discount. Then we talk about the show on Netflix called Babies. It's a documentary, different series, talking about babies and their developments. Pretty interesting. I talk about influencers in the wild, one of our favorite pages on Instagram. We mention Jay Shetty and how uh, someone's calling him out for being fake. Mm, doing uh -oh. some shady stuff. Then I talk about how Weinstein got convicted of third degree rape. Piece of shit. Then we got into answering the fitness and health questions. Here's the first question. This person says, look, I've learned that compound lifts are essential for building strength and muscle. So they're talking about lifts like squats and deadlifts and overhead presses. Then they ask, would you consider the hip thrust to be in the same category? Like, is it as valuable as those exercises? So we discussed the hip thrust and its value in comparison to those other lifts in that part of the episode. Next question, this person says, look, I have horrible all-around mobility. I need to work on my mobility everywhere. Should I focus on one area at a time or should I focus on the whole body as a whole? So we talk about the value and benefits of both strategies. The next question, this person says, uh, you guys talk about the importance of eating healthy and eating high-quality food all the time. What do you guys eat on a regular basis? So we get into our diets, what we like to eat on a regular basis, and we talk about their value. <laughs> That part was boring. A little bit. Then the final question, this person says, are massage guns good for recovery or are they a waste of money? So we talk about the potential value of massage guns, how to use them properly, and if and how, if you use them improperly, they possibly may be a waste of money. Mm. Also, as of the dropping of this episode, you have four days left to take advantage of our MAPS split 50% off Sale. Now, Map Split is a body sculpting, body building program. It's six days a week in the gym. It is advanced. So if you like to work out and you have some experience, it's extremely effective. We're getting lots of messages from people who are following Split. They're sending us their before and after photos. Uh, Map Split allows you to focus on particular body parts. So people are bringing up their delts, their back, their glutes. Uh, again, it's a very effective but advanced program. It's 50% off. This sale ends in four days. So here's how you get the discount. Go to mapssplit.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-P-L-I-T.com. And use the code SPLIT50. That's S-P-L-I-T-5-0. No space for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Ah, oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. We have three winners for iTunes. We have four winners for Facebook. The winners for iTunes are Jonathan P., Chats with Gabby, Cud Kitty. And for Facebook, we have Alexandra Maria. You reverse that. Luke Mosteller, Cheryl Walker, Kyle Myers. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Dude, I had an embarrassing uh, moment this morning at the gym. Oh, oh yeah, shit, yeah. Like it's like a total rookie. Something, something leak out. Or total what? no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. No, Do you Justin. see that right now? That's what? such a thing right now. What? what? It's funny you brought that. You oh, just, the the leaking. 
of uh, yeah, the, uh, the, material. What? What? Like, uh, what? No. The, what are you guys talking about? I'm talking about the, like, like, like you know, showing men's, their... menstruating, you know, leaks and, and you know, stuff like that. They're oh. like showing it as like a badge of honor. Oh, you're talking about the influencer thing that they're yeah, posting? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so, they're trying so hard to look authentic that it, it's bad. You know what I mean? It's like, I sh- look, I shit myself too or something like that or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, that's so, now what were you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that? Oh, that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Justin yeah. said that and it sparked that because it's still going on right now. Yeah, I've, I've I seen now a handful. It sucks when you joke and it's like really happening. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I know. It's <laughs> like ruins it. I, I, they're just trying so hard to look authentic that part of the formula is to quote unquote, you know, embarrass yourself or show that you're that some you know, something real happened to you. Right. But it doesn't look real because everybody else is doing it and it's kind of seems forced. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well not only that, is it is it really real for something like that to happen and then you go, wait a second, stop. Hey, go get my camera real quick. That's not real. Right. Yeah. yeah who does that? No, it's funny yeah. to like talk about it, but yeah, like it looks so staged. Right. That's a good point. So yeah. so that's Totally different. If we were having a conversation, right, and one of us, Justin, probably most likely to be female, and he brings up like, "Hey, yesterday yeah. I'm at the gym. You'd be hot though. I had my period. It was totally embarrassing. Totally it like st- stained my pants. All this stuff. It made a big deal about it. Like having a conversation that it happened to you sure. and like admitting it. Totally authentic, then real. It's taking a picture, right? But then the to to stop and go, wait a second, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Go get your camera. Let's, sure Let's take a right. picture. Let me yeah. show everybody that I too bleed. And I just don't, I, that to me is just weird. Yeah. yeah. There's a, again, there's so that's a lot. not what happened to you. What happened to no, you? No, I didn't. Yeah, sorry for the yeah. side. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring it back. <laughs> didn't have, I wasn't trying to pretend to be, actually, in fact, I was trying to be cool. Yeah, I was actually doing the opposite. <laughs> so I'm at the gym and uh, this and this just so happened, I got recognized. So some you know lady comes up to me Oh and I'm doing, I'm at the end of my workout. I'm doing arms or whatever. This lady's like, oh my God, I love your podcast. It's so great or whatever. I'm all, thank you, whatever. So now I'm aware that, you know, there's people in the gym watching or whatever. Mm. So I go to add more weight because that's what you do when you're trying to. <laughs> they know me here. I have yeah. to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't you know. know. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. doing my heavy set. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. oh, don't worry. You didn't interrupt me. I was just warming the up. The fans want to see it. <laughs> Let me add, yeah, I got to add more what weight. What can I say? Actually. So what I did was I had the, the tricep V bar on the, the push down machine because I was finishing my workout. And <laughs> what are you maxing out on dude, tricep push <laughs> Hey, naturally. Hey, the stack only goes to 200. It's not my fault. But anyway, uh, super newbie, like rookie mistake. I should know better. But what happens when you have a tricep press down machine and you pull the pin out? What happens? Yeah, the tricep bar comes down, slaps you in the head. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. You let that happen to you? Bro, I pull it out and it's whooping. It hits me in the head. I look around like, hey, did anybody see that? I feel like that's happened to everybody at least once. Everybody saw that. Yeah. Yeah, It shouldn't happen now, though. I've been doing this long enough. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple of close calls, right? Like when you're in a new gym and there's like a a, a bar that you're not sure. Because if it's, if it's a, some real weight. Yeah. If it's it's aluminum or it's plastic or it's a rope or that, it's not heavy enough to because right. it's 15 pounds, right? 15 pounds is the lightest, I think, or five pounds, five or 15 yeah, pounds. Yeah, it's five yeah. or 15 Something pounds like is normally the lightest plate on those cable machines. So as long as the bar is lighter than that, that doesn't happen. But sometimes it's just a little bit heavier than that. Yep. And you know Here what happens? Comes, you, know, you know what happens is because I felt like now I'm I'm being watched, which then made me you know totally awkward. You know, far more than normal, I should yeah. say. It's like oh, someone's watching me. Bing, hit me <laughs> yeah. right in the head, and everybody. It is made tough it. just to do your normal thing. Yeah, right, it was when so you have an audience. Right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, dude. Yeah. Hey, I had a great time, and uh, I want to know how was you guys this week uh, last week because I was on vacation. Well, we were all in different places, right? Yeah, Doug, yeah. Doug was up in Seattle. You were over in Hawaii. Justin was at home. Yeah, I was for at most, home for the most part. And then I went up to Tahoe, uh, the the la- last part of the week, at least. Oh, yeah. how was the weather up there right now? Uh, it was all right. It was like sixty degrees, and uh, most of the snow had already melted away. Oh, so good. it's like already kind of like you know moving into spring. Summer's how was the, how was the ride though? You rode, so the, and they make snow at North Star. So yeah, how, how was that? We actually had a really good time. Yeah, uh, the kids went in again, got like lessons for skiing, and, oh, and did that. And they did really good this time, and uh, I was glad because last time they didn't even take them on the lifts or anything, and so this time they actually took them on all the runs, and uh, they got to a point where they could actually like turn without doing the whole pizza thing. Oh, really? So, yeah. So they were actually uh, like, I guess, moved into like level three or something. So we're gonna start taking them uh, next season with with us. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how, how cool. that goes. It'll That's be fun. Cool. So I went I went snorkeling up in Ma- Maui. By the way, what a great this! I hadn't I was there when I was a kid. Didn't really remember it, so I had never been there as an adult. Uh, just went there recently. <laughs> Beautiful island. I mean, it's so crazy to to, to know that a place like Hawaii. Is a part of the, you know America. It's yeah. like a tropical, 
it's just so different and so amazing. But anyway, we went we went snorkeling. Cause How just, was it? That's an athletic endeavor for you. So uh, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I get anxious <laughs> on boats in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And uh, a swimming is not, I'm not this best swimmer right. in the Did world. Did you have your floaties on? Or? <laughs> they gave me a couple, uh, what Good. are they called? Noodles? Yeah, a little <laughs> noodles to hold on to. A couple of yeah. So anyway, uh, the, the weather was super windy out there in, in, in Maui. So I'm like, oh man, I want to time this so that it's not super windy because I don't want to be on choppy. I get motion sickness and all that stuff. Anyway, it just so happened we booked the boat. Yeah. Hella windy. So I took some Dramamine. You guys ever take Dramamine yeah. before? Yeah. Oh, it's a great sleeping product. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take Dramamine. Yeah, yeah. And what I have to do is I have to get on the highest point of, of the boat and I have to look straight ahead the whole time. So people are trying to talk to me and I, I'm sure they think I'm an asshole because I'm just yeah, looking straight you're ahead. Just focusing. Super choppy, super windy. Start getting a little bit nauseous, but I'm okay. And then we go snorkeling. And, uh, dude, there were turtle. I saw a turtle that was like the size of Doug just yeah. swimming wow. around around you, which is kind of a Doug turtle. That's... Yeah, it was a big old, it was a, it was a pretty big <laughs> turtle. It was actually me. Was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss it's, you. Dude, yeah. when you're in that that open water and you see a turtle that size, it's that's a little intimidating, you know, because you figure this thing could bite your. <laughs> you could ride it, dude. You could bike a little chunk out of you, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we saw some, some, you know, some whales on the way over there, which was, which was kind of cool. I got a little bit, you know, motion sickness that, that lasted the whole day, but. Super awesome out there. It's so it's so nice. Got hammered a few times. Ate terribly, mm. uh, which is which is always a good time. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. enjoy Wait, myself. Did you lift at all? I did. I lifted uh, almost every single day. Wow. Yeah. Man. Good for you. So the way I work out when I'm on vacation very different the way I work out when I'm home. I'm not doing my heavy you know intense workouts. I go to the hotel gym and I do 30 minutes every single day and just kind of touch every body part, get a little bit of a pump. I expect I'm not going to get a great workout, mm -hmm. but it does, it, it's good. It, it keeps me in the loop. I feel good. I enjoy working out in weird, different, you know, environments or whatever. And a hotel gym typically is that. So I had, a, I had a good time with that. And Jessica and I had a blast. So it was really good. How so, about you, Adam? You, you were hanging uh, out with the, I was in, oh yeah, I went out to Truckee. Uh, so we went up to the house and uh, I, we had the staff with us, so, or half the staff, I should say. We didn't have the whole staff, but I had about, uh, I had a handful of the employees with us and uh, got to take them up there for the first time. That was really cool. It was a good time, good bonding time for all of us. Uh, we worked, had, had some dinner together, kind of cooked together throughout the afternoon. Like just a good time, a uh, good time to get a, out of the studio in here. You know, sometimes it's nice to just go and change the scenery. Uh, where we're all working, so I think I saw you posting videos of you and your boy, and how's the dad stuff going on? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the the workout thing's a little rough right now. That's the uh, that's the challenge for me more than it's ever been. Yep. You know, I and I I just I went yesterday, right? So I'm like, I want to make it clear, like working out, having a hard time working out for me means that there's times where I'm maybe only getting once or twice in a week, which is really bad for me. Uh, it's still better than uh, not doing anything at all, right? Um, but I'm, I'm used to training five to seven days a week. I'm used to training like how you are, where it's just like, I rarely miss, mm -hmm. like even on vacation. And what I, what I find myself doing now is, you know, even when I went yesterday, like I come up to, I ask her, you know, do you, do you mind if I go work out? I never did that before. So that's a, that's like a new behavior that I, I now have because I have this guilt when I go sometimes it's really because I know that she's, she's working, you know, just as much as I'm working and then she's, and she carries more of the load with Max for sure. And so, you know, when, when I find that like hour or two hour time when, okay, he's down or there's a, or there's a possibility I could go work out. Like I really want to go. And I look at her and you know, of, and you ask permission. Yeah, and I ask permission, <laughs> if, 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 which had never happened May before, I? right? If that was, you know, <laughs> if that was just uh, seven months ago, yeah. uh, if I want to go work out, I go fucking work out. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? I'm asking. I do what I want. That's right. Well, I mean, that's right. <laughs> yeah. you You'll baby? see me at five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Then, we, then they have a baby. You have a baby. Uh, may I please? Um, yes. <laughs> that's um, that. I feel like I need to work. And out. you know, and I'm sure there's some guys out there who be like, "What a pussy." You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's not. It's not I even. I went through the same thing. It's not even. That Pound, it's dude. like I just no. I, you're being you're being a good man. I'm be, I feel guilty because yeah. I know she wants to work out just as bad as yeah, I no, want. You're being considerate, right? Yeah. And and I know that she's probably really tired from a long day. He's finally down, and of course I'm like, oh, she gets her little break now. Now I'm gonna go, yeah. and he's gonna be up in less than a half hour or an hour and back at doing his thing. And so I find myself asking to go work out, 
And uh, that's tough because there's sometimes where she's like, no, you know, she's like, I, I could really use your help to when Max wakes up, watch him so I can get the laundry done and I could do this and I could do that. And mm -hmm. how the fuck do I say no to that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I can't be you like, can't lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we ran out of detergent. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are you sweaty? Yeah. I ran to the grocery store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a, a lot of that is, uh, you know, now and, and because of that, um, again, uh, there's been, this has happened multiple times in my life where, major things have happened. Um, and this is a good conversation, actually, that we went this direction because uh, I think this happens to a lot of people, whether it be a kid, uh, a changing of a job, an injury, right. something that happens tragically in your family. Things happen in our life, and you know it radically changes uh, your activity level. and Your priorities <clears throat> have to change a little bit. Right. And, and now, the thing that, luckily, I've been doing this for a really long time, I know that when those... I'm very aware when those things happen and I also have to radically change the way I eat because, you know, being a, a six foot three, 225 pound guy, me moving a lot and exercising every single day burns a lot of calories and me sedentary, not moving a lot, not exercising. Big difference. Big difference. Yeah. You're talking about thousands of calories of a difference. It's not like, oh, I just can't have that extra cheese on this or, oh, I can't. I mean, I got to cut meals out, like mm -hmm. multiple meals out or dramatically reduce the caloric intake. And you got to think that this happens to people a lot in their lives. The problem is I doubt very few people are aware enough of it that they really radically change their diet, or either they're aware they're not just uh, they're not uh, as aware of how much of a dramatic difference it could potentially make. When you're not sending a signal for your body to adapt and build muscle, and you're not doing that movement, it's it's more than just the calorie out thing. It's not just oh a workout would have burned an extra 500 calories your for metabolism me. Metabolism you know. slower. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and it starts working against you. Yeah, so you know that that's been quite the adjustment for me right now. Is it's just the season, you know? There's different seasons in your life and some of them and you know I, I've, I'm listening to this another book by uh, Dr. John Gottman uh, this one is about having a baby right so it's about you know what, what happens to a family and a couple when they have a baby and whatever the first book was phenomenal that's the mm. the seven rules uh, I think it was called for a successful marriage or something like that and what they what he talks about and he talks about couples that uh, that fail when they have a kid versus couples that succeed when he has a kid he, he calls them uh, masters and versus disasters. And mm. he talks about statistics on how divorce rates spike for a lot of people after they have a child. But for those that don't, they get closer uh, than ever before. And he says, what is the one of the big differences? What are the big differences? And so he highlights some of the big differences and talks about what the masters do, what they do that's right. And one of the main things that they do is they accept that life is going to be different. The ones that, that, that don't do well are the ones that just can't accept it. So if you're like a six day a week in the gym and I have all these perfect meals and my house is always clean and organized and everything's the way. And yeah. then you have a kid or something happens in your life and you don't accept that it's just life is just different now. Yeah. You're constantly fighting reality and that's yeah. a shitty place to be. It's interesting like that. that. All those things are controls. You know, like I, I, had, I went through that whole thing of like, I want, you know, everything to be organized this way and I want my house to be clean. I want, they're going to be playing over here and then this is going to happen right <laughs> here. And the, yeah. None of that shit happened. And yeah. then you just realize later like, oh, I have to roll with all this. Yeah. And you, I have to be able to, you know, find a way to then, you know, sort of steer it steered in a way where I want it to go but it's like at, at the same time you have to you have to kind of release release that 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 tendency that you have to to want to you know like put your hands all in everything that's oh what it, what it, I mean it makes such a huge difference like living in resistance to the reality of what your life is that's like a you're just fighting every single day like this yeah. sucks this sucks or you could be like this is life now let's how do I adapt? And let me accept it. And that's a big one. And exercise, wonderful thing about exercise and nutrition, which I'm, you know, what you're talking about, is it's it's modifiable. Well, you can make it work around. Well, a good things. example of that is, uh, you know, what some of my exercise looks like right now is, you know, two days before the my lift, I actually got a lift, like I said yesterday, 
two days before that, um, you know, I wasn't going to get away. So, you know, we took the baby in the stroller and Katrina and I went down to the basketball court and we played ball for like Oh, that's an great. Hour. You know nice. what I'm saying? And like, that's so great. I got my movement. Does he like watching you guys do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. No, of course you're not. You know I'm going to be doing that all the time, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to force it down his throat, but he's going to see a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give him so, like, yeah, he's got skills. Give him candy or french fries every time. Just kind of condition him a little bit. I don't know why yeah. I love basketball so much. Yeah. It tastes good. But I mean, that's those are the things that, uh, you know, or we'll go out and we will. We'll take a night nice long walk or hike and we're, we're carrying him or pushing him in the stroller. And so, you know, I've just had to be okay with that. You know, I'm not in my primo buff guy shape right now. And it's like, what I have to do is be okay with, okay, you know, sometimes I'm going to be able to get a great lift in. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Sometimes I won't. I'll find ways to create activity and do things. I'll modify my diet when I'm not doing that. So it was, it was a little bit of a, uh, you know, like I said, asking <laughs> Katrina for permission to go work out was a completely foreign thing to me. And then it, and it, it only started happening recently because I did, I noticed that there was a little bit of push and pull because she wants to work out too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she's a, she's a, she's not quite a fitness fanatic as we are, but she's a lifetime she athlete. She values it. Yeah. And she's very consistent with her lifting and she, of course, has not been able to do that. And she just got done, you know, going through a pregnancy and her body morphing and changing. So I can't imagine what, you know, her body image issues that have to be going circling around in her own brain and wanting to address that and lift. And so, you know, I know she's got all that stuff going on. That's a, that's a big one. I've worked with uh, female trainers that have gotten pregnant and I, there was a really distinct line between the ones that like could not accept that their bodies were going to change and the ones that were accepting of it. What a difference in their experience. Like the ones yeah. that really, and, and, and if the, trainers are a good example because, and we've said this I don't know, a million times on the show, people who work in fitness, the percentage of us who've dealt with body image issues is just very high. It's, it's usually, it's typically what motivates somebody to get into fitness is solving that problem for themselves. I think this is true for most professions. You know, the person who's in it, you, they probably are dealing with that stuff themselves or have in the past. So I've worked with female trainers, got pregnant, had body image issues, did not accept the fact or couldn't accept that their bodies were, were changing and that they couldn't just do what they did before. Really, really rough. And then I've worked with female trainers who've gotten pregnant and have accepted like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm nauseous in the morning and my typical healthy paleo breakfast makes me want to puke. Yeah. And instead it's a piece of white toast and some Cheerios that I can, it's the only thing I can get down and I accept that, you know, and it, it makes a huge, huge difference. You, you know? guys have been proud of me though, last week. I, I, I dropped it down to cup zero and that's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold yeah, on, this yeah, is a big the whole deal. week. Let me get this straight. Wow. It, it's been you like it's been like years. One dude. Cup I don't know of, if you guys realize. <laughs> one cup of coffee <laughs> one a day. Cup, dude. Yeah, I tried to keep it to that like the whole week and, and stick with it. And Did, it was now, do you rough. Have, do you have a I was just gonna say, do you have a memory of last week? Uh, forget the, whole week. <laughs> the la like the first two days, like Monday and Tuesday. I mean, I was like throbbing headache and oh, wow. you know, just chugging water, and that helped a lot. Like so at, at one point, and I was I was even taking some Motrin and everything because it was wow. just like I mean, I was up there. Yeah, you guys saw what I was doing. There's no problem there. You know, yeah. No, no addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in denial. Like I knew, I knew what was in front of me. You know, I had to address this. I didn't want to. Now, and, now, did uh, it start getting better towards the end, or how long did it take for you to? Yeah, no, it did. After like the first two days, I, I felt like um, I, I was on one cup, and then was just like. You know, I had a little bit of a twinge and then I just kept going. I powered through it and then I didn't even feel it like Wednesday through, you know, today. So, oh, right. Are you, how long are you sticking to one cup for? Uh, I'm going to stick with it for um, probably a few weeks, maybe like two more weeks and then start, you know, ramping it up again. Now, yeah. do you think there's any value of using like something like CBD to like the, for the transition of that, Sal? Yeah, I, I was just going to mention that. Uh, probably. A oh, good really? Idea. Yeah, because uh, CBD and cannabinoids, I actually have a story around that. CBD and cannabinoids have that effect on the body of uh, alleviating anxiety, kind of giving you a more a better feeling. Uh -huh. One of the um, the hallmarks of caffeine withdrawal is irritability yeah. and just just pain. A lot of people don't realize this, but caffeine is a has a painkiller and is a natural. Is it really? It is. It's a painkiller yeah. and a natural antidepressant. So they'll do studies where they'll give it's people an Excedrin. Yeah, it, it, I used to take that all the time. Yeah. So if so, uh, a lot of stimulants are. So like if you. They've done studies where they give people caffeine and then they do these pain tests where people have to keep their hand in like freezing water and see how long they can keep it in there. Uh -huh. And caffeine improves you know, performance. It, it raises your pain tolerance. So when you go off of it, people tend to feel more pain, 
feel anxiety um, and uh, and feel a little bit depressed. Yeah. So CBD or, or well, I had been doing that before bed, like, and I was getting great sleep, anyways, like uh, throughout uh, you know the week with that. But uh, I actually, that was one of the biggest things I noticed when I would go to sleep. I got deeper sleep, you know, obviously because mm. I was cutting the stimulants mm. down. So isn't that crazy though? How uh, like the withdrawal from caffeine, something that everybody has, so nasty. It sucks. <laughs> it's it's terrible. It's a terrible. It, it, it's a deterrent for sure. Like, well, I, I think very few people even. Uh, do it though i think very few people actually wing themselves off like right. you just accept that it's it's become so it's part ritual. of our, it's so part of our culture i mean yeah. i'm just as guilty i was yeah. i was texting back and forth with harbinger this weekend and i'm I'm like, hey, let's meet for coffee. I mean, that's just what yeah. you do, right? It's like, well, why coffee? Why not we meet for lunch? Dude, I used something? to be in my office when I worked for myself. Yeah, I was like, uh, I go to coffee shop. It's just become a part that. of our life that that's what we do is like you you meet and you have coffee or you start your day with coffee. It's just, I don't think very many people even care to try and see like, oh, what? And, and we know there's been enough research out there for you know that amount of milligrams is positive right there's not a there's not a lot of sure. negatives that have ever been published about taking caffeine in consistently in low low to moderately low doses in fact there's more positive stuff that's came out in regards to what the study and research mm -hmm. say about caffeine so who the fuck is trying to get off of it yeah, nobody's yeah. trying to get off yeah. of it yeah. but i think i think now you are starting to hear more people talk about uh how it can hinder weight loss. And I think that's the part when you're somebody who, and we mentioned this on a, uh, the recent episode that we just did about supplements, you know, where I see it, the biggest problem where is in the clients that were trying to lose body fat and were cortisol junkies. They were, they were mm -hmm. doing the F45, the orange theory type, high intensity CrossFit type stuff. And they're pounding four or five energy drinks or four or five coffees a day. And those are the people I think that are the, the ones that are greatestly affected. Totally. By and then don't forget the psychological uh, impact of feeling like you're tied or chained to something. So, and I would see this quite clearly with clients, whether it be wine or whether it be coffee, if I mentioned to, to a person, hey, let's try eliminating the, your morning cup of coffee. Oh, no. Can't do that. I can't Whoa do that. Whoa there, dude. Yeah, yeah. or no, my glass of wine every night. If you have that reaction with anything, if there's anything in your life that you're consuming, <laughs> that if just the thought of removing it is like, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a psychological dependency. Yeah, which, check yourself. Yes, which is not which yeah. is typically not a good thing. You don't want to necessarily be attached or chained to anything. But back to CBD. So I got a story for you guys, right? right. So. You guys know that uh, I tend to take everything people send to us. <laughs> yeah, 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 so. yeah. So we get a lot of products. You almost took a pill this morning that uh, was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, dude, so. we should share that. Yeah. Can you believe that? I, w I wonder if the, the cameras were rolling yet. Uh, were the cameras rolling yet so for that, good. Doug, or no? They were. I don't think so. It was like yeah. echinacea or something. <laughs> yeah, it could like, have been. They had to leave it to a, been crystal in Mind Pub Studio. There's pills that are like <laughs> laying out sometimes. <laughs> And Sal just reaches over and just grabs it, and he, I, I'm watching this. He doesn't. I don't think he realizes. There's just I'm a pill on the floor. I don't think he realizes <laughs> I'm watching. And I watch him pick it up, and he looks at it, and he starts to make the move to put it in his mouth, and he kind of like stops, and then he kind of is examining it to see what it is. Oh wait a minute, what is this? Yeah, then he sets it down. He goes like, "I don't think that was mine, <laughs> like, bro. You were about to just throw that in your mouth, and you didn't even know what it was. I thought maybe I dropped it or something, dude. <laughs> you know, so I looked, supplement. And then I like, wait a minute, this might be something else. No, yeah. anyway, um, so people send us stuff all the time to try, and we we get CBD products a lot. sent to us on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> Um, so I had one sent to me and, uh, for whatever reason, I, 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 I packed supplements when I go on trips and I actually didn't even think about it. I packed this, this, this brand, uh, and I want to mention it because we're not going to work with them or whatever. Plus I don't like the product. I, I pack it. And so now I'm in Maui and you know, at night we're, you know, we're, we're going out, we're having a good time. <coughs> and I like to use, you know, our sponsor, Ned at, in the evening, didn't have it with me, saw this other product. And it was CBD. It was a CBD product. So it wasn't full spectrum. Boy, I had to use a way more, a way higher dose of it than I do with the Ned. And it's simply because it had only CBD in it. It didn't have the other cannabinoids. Oh, what, yeah. a, what a difference. Yeah, it was a man. huge, yeah, because when you take CBD with other cannabinoids, the effects you get are amplified. Mm -hmm. And I had to take a way higher dose of this other stuff just to get the same you know, or, or, or close to it. it still wasn't the same effect. Cause what I get from the, from the net is that, you know, after about an hour, you get that real calm, relaxing feeling. Mm -hmm. I took like 
you know, three doses of this other one, waited an hour. I'm like, wow, I don't really feel anything. Take another three doses, waited an hour. Uh, maybe I feel a little bit. I was like, holy cow, this bottle will last me three doses at that high of a uh, you know amount. Or I, I got a phone call from my mom a uh, day before yesterday, and uh, she calls me up and she's like, hey, I, I said, I, um, I really want to try some CBD. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what the hell? I was like, really? What, what makes you want to do that? She goes, well, I was reading Sal's blog. I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know she was following it in the yeah. first place. Yeah. I'm oh, like, that's oh. really cool. I was like, that's right. He just wrote a CBD blog. I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, my mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, very little does she pay attention to the show or any, anything like that at all. I know her, I know her husband listens to the show on a more regular basis. But to have her reach out and ask about CBD, I thought that was really funny. I was like, that was totally in left field until I realized, like, oh shit, Sal just wrote a blog. Oh, good, that's good. For but her. I guess that's she's awesome. reading her stuff. That's I didn't know she funny. Was- I, I told you guys I had got my mom to start taking some CBD and like even, uh, you know, recently because she she suffers from like arthritis and like all kinds of different pain and stuff. She she's just tired of taking not like all these NSAIDs and everything else yeah. all the time to to cope with it. So you know, trying it out and uh, you know, so far it's, it's working. You know, good for her on some level but i guess to sleep at night she started ramping it up and, and started taking like the little five milligram uh, thc mm-hmm. like chocolate balls and no I was way like, my yeah. mom's like like eating wheat wait wait wait. like this is tripping me out dude where did she get it from did she I go to the dispensary like, no one of her friends like gave it to her and so she's like asking me about it i'm like <laughs> i'm like wait a second like you just ate weed <laughs> like let's celebrate oh my god how t- <laughs> how t- i'm t- so conservative you have no idea you know what makes me th- you know what i think of i wonder if she thought to herself like oh, how do i tell my son Oh, my dad you know, threw under the bus. Uh, He's like, oh, you tell her what you're doing. Oh, like, oh, get all psychedelic. A- Adam, I wanted to bring up uh, that show you told me to watch on Netflix. Oh, the babies. Babies. Yes. You what? watched it. Please tell me. So I watched, uh, I was in and out because I had to do work, but I caught uh, some of the first episode and a decent ch- chunk of the second episode. So first episode, okay. Second episode was probably the most, I've gone through, I think six I'm on now. I'm on, spe- so it's cool. They break up each. Uh, episode in like a, a topic, right? So it's like breast milk, speech, crawling, walking, uh, talking. Dude, like they're each t- it's really cool. It's crazy what we're starting to learn. Like the bre- breast milk. The breast milk thing blew me away. I sent it to all my friends hmm. and we'll see what happens. I was going to watch it, but I was also trying to get laid. Well, so, so- <laughs> I was like, nope. So- and we're watching a show on babies. Yeah, with a stop- I was like, it's going to kill us. So we, right we know, obviously we know a lot already about breast milk, right? And what I liked about this documentary, right? was because all all documentaries are biased, right? I mean, I don't give a fuck what it is if it's if it's if it's on anything that and even there you'll see Sal's you go through more there's like there's some things where they reach a little bit because okay. they have kind of a, a an overarching kind of theme that they're trying to to present. So, hmm. by no means do I think it's a flawless documentary, although it did reveal some really interesting things and one of the things that I found most interesting was how what the research they've done on breast milk and how it's constantly altering and changing, yep. and it and it and it's different if you have a boy or a girl. Uh-huh. So like the breast milk knows that you had a little boy and it changes the iron levels. It has a little girl. It changes it changes the chemistry. Yeah. So of a it. female's mm-hmm. skeletal structure matures faster than a boy's, and so the milk is produced to help that process happen with a little girl. Breast milk is different if it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening. If the and there's this there's always the the, the body of the mom and the and the body of the baby when when they're breastfeeding are constantly communicating totally. with one of each them, other. If one of them gets sick, it alters and changes. If the baby is sick, so tra- yeah. check this out. If the baby is sick and it and it, it breastfeeds, it sends a signal to the mother's body to produce uh, uh, immune boosting compounds um, and uh, things that help the baby's body fight the this a specific infection because they'll change depending on the infection. So she'll get the signal. The body will produce it in the milk and give it to the baby. It's You're- crazy. It's just it's hard to to think if like you know formula could ever re- you know reproduce that. No, you would have to have in order for formula. Because I thought about that as I'm watching this, I'm like, wow. Like, how many different versions like would you have to create? You would have to have something that would continuously monitor the baby yeah. on an on an ongoing basis and create the formula as we get the readings 
from the child. That's how smart the human body is. And that's, is. It, that's yeah. just the stuff that we know of. That, that's the thing that I trip out on right there, what you just said, yeah. is that this is what we know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, what the fuck do we not know still in this? How about this? Wait till you get to the crawling one. This blew my mind. So up until recently, we've believed that crawling is a learned behavior. Right, I mean, did you guys know? I mean, that's what I always thought mm. that it was. You know, you that they oh, like you, you taught like they watch somebody do it. Yeah, they, they watch, it. and then you begin to start to make strides. You take you stretch things out from the kid, and he starts to right. put that together. No, it's innate in us, yeah, and the way they the way they prove this, they took one year old, two year old babies, they created this, and they said it's a it has to do more with visual. Mm. So they created this. Uh, yeah, so you go left, right. So what they created, they they created this like um. Uh, what I don't know what the fuck I want to call it, like a track and it has this running running lights and it look it looks like almost like uh, all these dots are on it so it's moving mm -hmm. and if you hover a baby over it and they they'd hold this like you know one day old baby over over the top of it and the the baby would see see it and think it's moving and all of a sudden start automatically doing, do automatically it. start doing crawling patterns huh and then they and they started to take them. They they created this like skateboard thing for newborns. They they have to I mean obviously it's a newborn, so they have to like strap strap them in and everything. And they put that that running light underneath them, and then they fucking crawl across the floor. Mm -hmm. It's wild to see a one day old baby shot out all of a sudden crawling across the floor. They just don't have the strength yet. They haven't got enough nutrition, enough food, enough strength. It's just like when a horse is born and it picks in and starts to walk. <laughs> yeah. you know, right after birth. It's just we give it's birth encoded in their DNA. Yeah, it's just we give birth to a a, a fetus essentially because if it, if we, we the reason why humans don't give birth to to humans that are capable of doing that stuff would be too big to exit the the womb well i've heard too like if you skip that so there's there's kids that go from that just straight to cruising or you know Walking. yeah where that they have developmental problems later in terms of learning Mm -hmm. So they address that. They talk about that. They're, you know, everyone's different, like how they learn. Like so that some kids will sit up and then stand on something, and then, and they they actually kind of debunked what you just said. They, really? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I figured it. That was yeah. old wise. Thing. It was. It was kind of this old theory that it was necessary that you learn how to crawl for your for learning capabilities down the road. Like, and they kind of debunked that. But they did get into. They got into speech and. Uh, the importance of like how you communicate and and how keeping the kids around and other people that are communicating and talking to them mm -hmm. how important they did this whole test on um, learning like how to like we don't think about this but how crazy is it that a newborn brain figures out speech like right. if you tried to learn a language right now you're a grown ass intelligent man and you try and teach yourself Chinese right now you know how fucking hard that sure. is. Yeah. So how crazy is that that, that a newborn who's never heard anything before somehow distinguishes language? And so what they theorized was it's actually like the 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 tones of it that they learn to break up. And they did all this these studies to like show how a baby starts to break up sounds and how they all separate together to finally put those together to words and then connect it to things. And it mm. was fucking fascinating wow. as shit. Wow. Yeah. And the, huh. I think in the first one, didn't they talk about um, when, when we started to learn that babies want comfort versus maybe it was in, in the book that I was listening to comfort versus because the old theory was that the reason why a, a baby was tied to its mom was for food because she provided the baby with milk. Then there's this famous study that was done where they took baby chimps and they gave it the option to, first they, they constructed this wire mesh uh, mom chimp with a bottle for the nipple, but it was just a wire mesh. Then they, gave, then they constructed this fur, you know, kind of uh, this, this soft nice feeling texture. soft one mm. that would hug the baby mm. and the baby would drink the milk and then go to the one to get hugged. And so uh -huh. they started realizing like, oh, it's the, it's, it's the comfort, it's the love and the touch that they really seek out the food isn't why they're connected to oh know, that must be your book whatever. i don't think that, that was in that was in the book then and oh yeah, yeah. yeah wow that's but it is interesting about and you know Bre and again this is in uh this is in another book i was reading uh breast milk do you know that babies they're showing studies that that children receive benefits from breast milk up until they're five yes years old yes oh god now that doesn't mean that they <laughs> yeah let's not go that path you know like game of thrones where it's got <laughs> 
<laughs> She's still <laughs> breastfeeding this kid. Hey, the truth of that, He's though, like is like standing it, up. It, 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 <laughs> hey, the truth of that is, though, thinking way back evolutionary, it, it makes sense that you would probably- yeah, back then, maybe. You would probably feed your kid on the breast for as long as you could because it's it's food right there. Yeah. You don't got to go hunt it. You got to get to gather it. Yeah. So you probably would take advantage of that for quite some time. It's supply yeah. and demand, too. As long as there's suckling going yeah. on, the body would I'm going to go skateboarding, and then hold on a second, Mom. Can I have a drink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel like Ugh. I feel like if the kid can remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, or I, ask you, you've waited too yeah, long. I, no, I just don't. Can... I just don't want to have that memory. You know, imagine right now if you remember <laughs> being breastfed by your mom. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, it'll be, never be I mean, the same. But yeah. but what they what they talk about uh, in this other book is that they it's not that you you exclusively breastfeed your your child when they're you know three and four. It's that they have some. That's supplemental to you know. I have a I have a family member that is breastfeeding her kid, th- three years old. So do I. Yeah, walks up to the, walks up to mom, pulls the boob out. Wow. Hey, she's well, she she's done now because she's ten now. But I tell you what, she's healthy as shit, man. Oh, because she was sure. breastfed till she, she was breastfed three? till she was three. She walk over and pull the boob right out. Oh, yeah. yeah everyone was, and everyone in the family was like, "What the fuck? You know, <laughs> yeah, this is crazy." Dude. But I'm not gonna lie, dude. I look at her. She's beautiful. She's fucking smart as yeah, got, shit. Got she's teeth got teeth and shit though. That's oh, hard. she's yeah, she's yeah. super. Well, they get teeth her way earlier. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> anyway, to each their own. dude, I was. You know that that page on Instagram. Influencers. In the oh, world. I love that. Oh, it's so good, dude. It blew, it blew up so fast, right? It did. It had like when we talked about it overnight, it had like, dude. Ten thousand followers. Yeah, it's, it's in the m- millions now. It's in the millions. So you know what I was thinking? So I was, you know, here I am in 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 in, um, um, in Maui with Jessica, and of course I'm have we're taking selfies, and I yeah. couldn't help but think. Yeah. God, I wonder if somebody. <laughs> it's gonna be dude. That's you. how I say it now. Like, yeah, when, if Courtney's taking a picture of me, I'm like, here we go. Let's do a little influencer in the wild. Yeah. Action. So what I thought to myself was, I, that page is gonna backfire. So at first, that page is to make fun of influencers, but now that that page has so much influence, I can imagine influencers staging shitty whatever poses uh, so that that page shares them. Yeah. Don't tell me that's not a brilliant way to get yourself. Uh, Who, who's going to be able to distinguish, you know, that whether it's authentic or not? I thought about it. I almost, because I, I was talking to Jessica, I said, I wonder if you film me filming myself and I'll trip or do something stupid and sure. then you send it to Influencer in the Wild. Oh, they'll post if it's th- funny enough. And uh, millions of people will see it. Yeah, but the, the truth is, though, how many people, okay, those are mocking all those people. So how many people see the guy who trips, who's filming himself, goes, hey, I want to fall that idiot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not is it really a value for you to get seen on a page with a million followers? Yeah. Are you really going to gain that many? I don't know. Well, dude. I found it interesting cuz I was just like in my neck of the woods down near, you know, Santa Cruz where the lighthouse was and I this is a perfect spot to like capture all these people. Like you you just sit there long enough and in you know, sure enough, there's going to be influencer type, you know, like teenage, you know, girls or whatever, like pretending to be models, doing all this <laughs> shit. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know, all you have to do is go to like some kind of landmark somewhere, you know, and you're going to, you're going to get this, uh, like I- any kind of like, you know, theme park or anything. Yeah. Oh uh, shit. It's in the mall now, dude. Yeah. I was in the mall just like last week oh, yeah. and I'm shopping through there. Like, oh, you just have to look for and it. They're like groups of girls doing the, the TikTok stuff, oh, you know, where they do, cause oh. it's all to music and dancing and stuff like that. And like right in the middle of like dude. the, the, the Macy's makeup area. <laughs> the, like, what the fuck? Dude? So weird. No shame anymore. Well, yeah, what's weird is that it's that it's okay and it's normal. It's yeah. become so I normal. I say that and then I do parkour. Yeah. Oh, Did so you guys weird. see uh, um, the video? I forget the name of the girl. She called out Jay Shetty. Oh, Ooh, dude. Yes. That was a fire uh, video, man. I wow. wonder. He's a, I didn't realize he was uh, that fake. Yeah. I didn't know him very well. I, I knew who he Just was. Just verbatim, like ripped off. He's got like four, mil, four or five million followers. So apparently, so what she does in the video, and she does it very well, is she takes all of his quotes and his posts, and then she shows how those quotes and posts were up uh, on other people's pages yeah. where other people way other before. Other tweets, other like blogs, other like speeches, everything. Like, like everything. Literally to the line. And it was verbatim. He would literally plagiarize them verbatim and act as if, and never give credit and act as if. And he's a he's one of those inspirational, quote unquote, motivational people. And he gets credit for a lot of stuff that he copied. I mean, if he was a comedian, he would get destroyed oh, well yeah. she referred to him as the uh carlos, carlos mencia, mencia of, yeah uh, of of comedy who people. is who is known for that who's stealing everybody's jokes and then and then doing that so it's not it's a tried and tested thing for sure that people do Dude, this if you i yeah. mean here's the thing he's an actor 
He does a good job acting, and people like it. Oh, a phenomenal just, job. I didn't catch yeah. on to it. No. I've seen his stuff before, and it's like, oh, that's cool. No. You know? Oh, that was Tony Robbins who originally said that. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, this is a famous author. I mean, that, that. To, I mean, to his credit, he does a, an incredible job of of plagiarizing it like it's his own. I mean, mm-hmm. he can he I he mean, presents sh- it well. Yeah, he, he you see him presenting you know three or four other people's quotes in one in one conversation. Like he goes on a rant for like two minutes. All it is is a series of other people's quotes that he's <laughs> yeah. isn't it a matter of time though you know it's like you, you got that as your formula to to keep spewing all that stuff out like it's, you're gonna get caught like there's yeah. no way like in, well, in, in this day in age, real life and we talk about this yeah. right we talk about um i mean i smell it out as soon as we meet somebody like we we get an opportunity to meet a lot of, of people that are quote unquote fucking famous or whatever because they're popular on instagram or whatever mm-hmm. And, you know, you can, it's really clear, really quick who the authentic real ones are that you meet them. They have, they have that charisma about them. You yeah. meet them and they're just, they got this energy. You're drawn to them. We like them right away. Yeah, you know what you do? You take them off script and you can tell real quick. You just try and take them off script and they go right back to what they know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, the scripted guys don't like when you like interrupt them. Yeah. Quote, yeah. quote, yeah. quote. That's yeah. why I always do it purposely. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, did that ruin your cadence? It's so, it's so annoying. And people don't like to be fooled. Like if you like, let's say you listen to Jay Shetty and he really motivates you and inspires you, and then you find out that he plagiarized other people. You because you felt moved initially, it's it almost feels hurtful. Now the reality and the truth is, it inspired you and motivated you, regardless of whether or not if it was his or not. So really, you should just be like, oh cool, that that worked for me. But when somebody touches you and then you find out that they're not real. It's almost like you take it personal, you know. Yeah. Well, I we, I, f- I find it. You got bamboozled. I don't know. Well, well, I don't know if I had to throw a number at it. I'd say it's fifty fifty. I feel like it's a fifty fifty shot when I'm about to meet somebody. Like we we meet somebody who's coming mm-hmm. on the show. They're they're supposed to be this you know big famous person or whatever. And you know, and a lot of times we're wrong. Like there's been many times where I think somebody's going to be super fake. We meet them and they're fucking rad. There's many times where I think someone's going to be super rad. We meet them and I'm like, oh my god, they're super fake. It's just this. We're in a time now where you can, you can plagiarize people like that and get away with it, and, or create an image that you want to present and become famous for it, and mm-hmm. not really be that person. But here's the thing, and why I don't really care that much, and why it doesn't like some people get really angry about that stuff, and it pisses them off, and it frustrates them. That has to be a miserable life inside. Yeah. You know, you you may you may enjoy the the millions of dollars that you make uh, initially because you you got famous or whatever, but eventually that shit wears it's on torture you. Torture you, yeah. Eventually, yeah, that if you live, if you if you imagine being fake all the time, yeah. like who are you? Right, that's got to be a terrible. It's not who to, you are. No. And, and, and we've and we've seen this. There's there's people that have got that that millions of followers, and they've got unbelievable anxiety. And they're miserable and they're depressed and they're making all this money and they're famous on social media, but then behind the scenes, they're absolutely well, miserable. Imagine getting love from people. So you get lots of love from people, but you know that what they're loving isn't you. Right. Yeah. That's got to make you feel absolutely terrible. Yeah. And eventually, and maybe not while it's working. Because I'm sure I could get a thrill out of like the idea of building something, like mm-hmm. building the business. At some point, though, it'll you try yeah. and become that person. Yeah, you know, you're, right. Like, you're trying to own it, and then eventually you do. You just feel and and the i the irony of all this too is like the message, and we called this fucking a long time ago, which is you know why we fucking trademark stay authentic, because we knew it was going to become a popular thing to say that you are like it's one thing to be authentic, it's another thing to like try and present it in such a fake ass way, which is what I think we we're seeing more mm-hmm. and more is. People are like okay, uh, authenticity is the message. So right. how do I present authenticity? Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they try and you look know, at my create. messy hair, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, so uh, this just came out as of the recording of this uh, podcast. I want to bring it up on the podcast real quick. Harvey Weinstein found guilty of rape, Whoa. third degree rape, acquitted of top criminal charges, but still found guilty of third degree rape. So. He got. He how got long? It. How long is he? Yeah. Go? What's his sentence? Uh, it doesn't say so far, but like um, six weeks. Uh, I don't know, but the top, the top, uh, what were they called? The top criminal charges he got acquitted of. Those came with life sentences. So he he skipped. He missed out on that, but he's probably definitely going to get some hmm. some jail time. So he faces a sentence. Oh, here you go. It came out. He faces a sentence of five to twenty five years on the top count. So anywhere between five to twenty five years. 
in jail he can get. Five is nothing. Sounds like he got bro. off light. Yeah. If you get nailed for five, you do three to four, dude. Yeah. Mm. You sure. know what's stupid to me? This just makes no sense to me. That if he got caught with the, you know, if he was in a state with minimal charges for drug possession, that's like what cocaine, yeah. he would go to jail for life. Yeah. But getting, you know, guilty of rape, you know, even if it's third degree. So third degree rape, do you know what that means? No. It means that the person was uh, incapable of giving consent uh, when he had sex with them. So it's not like- It's not even first degree. First degree rape is like, you're, you know, you're, you're yeah, physically- old. You're taking it. But yeah. it could mean that they're kind of inebriated or that they uh, can't really give you, you know, consent. So it's still disgusting, right? Yeah. Five to 25 years? I'm sorry. If you- fit, if you commit violence against and he's, someone when they say 5 to 25 they always give he always get especially yeah. when you got money and yeah, you, you're, sure. you're getting he's five, slap bro. more fines on him and yeah I don't, get less sentence now here's the thing i don't know because that they're he they made a big deal out, out of him and because he largely was what drove the me too movement they may try to make an example of him which is i hope yeah. what ends up happening i hope they make an example of him and send a message uh to all these, you know, these people in Hollywood uh, that listen, you fuck around like this, your ass is going to jail. Well, for a Well, we long should time. do an over under bet right now. I think he gets. I think he gets under fucking seven. You think he gets under yeah. seven? Yeah, dude. I, you're I probably right. Not only do I think he gets under seven, but then I think he serves half of that. Yeah. So I mean, the the time that he'll probably do for that, it's really unfortunate. And you, yeah, it's disgusting. The part that I don't like is exactly what you said: is that we're we're putting people in jail, and even the fucking filthiest drug dealer who's carrying around fucking kilos of cocaine. Like, he's dealing to people that want it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, that's, right. to me, that is way less offensive than somebody than somebody drugging somebody and raping them. Like, yeah. how are those even in the same fucking universe? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't it make no any sense. It makes no sense yeah. to me. I remember when, uh, maybe 10 years ago, when the legalizing marijuana movement was really big, they would bring up cases just to show how ridiculous things were. And they showed this man that was growing marijuana. He had, I don't know how many plants he had. He was growing mar marijuana. Life sentence, and then they compared him to a man that got uh, that got was guilty of of child molestation, like terrible. I don't want to go to the details of it. And the guy got five years. Damn. It just makes no fucking sense to me. Yeah. If you're violent against another human being, that should be the worst possible thing you could do. Yeah, I don't understand these minimal charges for drug you know possession in, in comparison. Mm. All right, our first question is from Lucy ZL3. From listening to Mind Pump, I've learned that compound lifts are essential for building strength and muscle. Would you consider the hip thrust to be in the same category, or is it more of an accessory exercise for those seeking to develop, develop their glutes? Ooh, that's a great... It is a great question. And that I is a really good question. And it's crazy, actually, you bring up the hip thrust. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we're going to combo this with well, uh, I didn't drama? Know that, I didn't know you were yeah. going to go this direction yeah. and bring up the hip thrust, but we didn't talk about the intro. The, the master of the hip thrust. Our our buddy over there, Brett Contreras, is getting some heat right now. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Boy, yeah. that just, that is, you know, again, here's the thing that sucks about being in the limelight like that is, you know, you do some shit where you cheat on your girl for that long. I mean, and same thing with like Lewis. I don't know She's how, going after him. Well, you know, I listened to her talk. She's not throwing him under the bus. Like she's not saying his name. It's just mm -hmm. that everybody, everybody who knows that they were together, like as obviously she's inferring it. But we, yeah, all know. and she wrote a fucking newsletter. I mean, she did put a newsletter out. Like she, so she, and she's got like three hundred thousand followers. So she's got a massive following mm -hmm. herself. So basically, he was she cheated on her. Yeah, yeah, he cheated on her with his assistant for like a year or a year and a half or some mm -hmm. shit is what what she said. Okay. Of course, and I'm only repeating what I've heard from her. Which, yeah, we don't which, know the, the, which, the whole deal. I mean, she's the victim. I would think that she's probably the most credible source to like share the information. So it's not like I'm, I'm sharing. But we don't know for sure, hundred percent, just oh, based off what she said. Yeah, 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 based right. off of what she said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what'd you say about Lewis? At Lewis, same thing, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. With uh, what's her face, Jen Doc Doc Fit or whatever. I forget her. I forget what her her handle is or whatever. Same thing. I, you know, I was just talking to, to Jordan at lunch too. I was like, man, I was really surprised. That that didn't destroy his image. I thought that somebody who's like that, you know, the oh, super positive, or everything right. like that, and then I'm you, a good guy. Yeah, yeah, kind of presents himself in that light would get really crushed by that, and just didn't. I, I, but I, when the one thing that I think both of them are doing, and I've I, I've seen Brett's page too, and I know there's already all this crazy hate just not acknowledge it yeah just totally mm -hmm. ignore yeah, it let and the storm kind of roll by you know mm -hmm. this is so i actually respect lane norton a lot exactly for this he oh he addressed it he yeah he got divorced because uh he had an affair and he addressed it head on mm -hmm. publicly which takes a lot of balls yeah. you know and so i appreciate that you oh know. it's one of the things that we we've connected i mean we consider lane a friend and 
you know, he's a very polarizing personality, but at the end of the day, I, I think that he means well. Uh, we all felt that way, yeah. and we felt he's authentic. We're yeah. talking about people that are authentic and really, yeah, themselves. like him or not. Yeah, Lane he is, wears it on his sleeve. Yeah, Lane, yeah. Lane is not They'll trying to know. pretend that he is. He is. He comes off as an asshole sometimes. That's who he is. That's who, he's one hundred percent. Yeah, he's one hundred percent. You meet that, him in person sometimes. You're like, what an asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, all right, yeah. Yeah. for sure. So, I understand you. Uh, yeah. I know that I just took a left on that, but that yeah. just reminded well, me like, that people are flawed, dude. People are flawed. We all make mistakes. So it's just you know and i think sometimes when you put someone on a pedestal or they put themselves on a pedestal maybe it's a long fall you know mm. when 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 shit finally well that's comes where up. i think it's crazy is that the ones that that put themselves on the pedestal and i think probably it's more surprising to me about lewis than it is brett cuz i don't feel like brett really talked about no. that stuff like he was really he he kept all his personal life uh, pretty quiet. No, he stayed on to the the, the glute building plan yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right, so let's get back to the to the hip thrust. Now, I you know I've recently been doing more and more hip thrusts, and I see a lot of value in them. Yeah, your glutes look great. They look amazing. Wow. You should feel them. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to give you a good game slap. No, there. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Don't do that. I, uh, but you know, to place them in the same category, because there's a lot of compound lifts. Any lift that inc that uses more than one joint would be considered compound. That doesn't mean that all compound lifts, though, are in what I would consider the, the, the best, you know, the top category of lifts, which include barbell squat, uh, deadlift, overhead press. Those are the three kind of top lifts that I would say. Then you can throw in like a barbell row um, and a bench press. So there's your, your top, top five. Would I consider a hip thrust no. in that? And no, the answer, no. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't no. do that. Like. I can think so. Barbell squat, I would say one of the best exercises you could do for your lower body. I think any split stance free weight exercise, like a lunge or a Bulgarian split stance squat, still superior to a a, a glute, you know, a, a hip thrust in terms of just functional performance and overall development. Mm -hmm. Any squat variation, I would also put above it. Front squats, back squats, goblet squats, step ups on a step, uh, weighted step ups, I might even rank higher. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the hip thrust doesn't have a lot of value. No, I just don't know if I would put it up there. It's just more isolated. Like, yeah. It's just got one function to it. Yeah. So I got into this debate on our forum like last year when I came out and said this. So I came out and kind of shit on it a little bit. And I shit on it for, for these reasons because people were coming out and saying it's the most functional exercise that we can do and – I was like, too no, far. yeah, no, too far, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or it's the one of the best compound movements we can do. No, 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 no. It's not. You know, it's not the most functional. It is not. Is it an awesome exercise? Fuck yes. Yeah. Is it incredible for building the glutes? Yes. Like it's definitely. I definitely believe it belongs in a lot of people's repertoire for sure. I don't think it's like just you got some good French there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> did I mess it up? Bro? No, you did. No, you rolled oh, okay. it off the tongue. Don't fuck with me, bro. No, 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 no. I was impressed. I, was I had that combo. I had that pure combo. Oh, this you morning. did. Yeah, oh, fucking snap. Organifai coming through there. Speaking of time stamp, like twenty minute, thirty minutes. It is. No, it see, it takes me longer. I think it takes Sal thirty. I think we're almost like forty five, fifty into this. So it's a little delayed in my brain a little bit. So. <laughs> but anyways, Merci. I just I, I got into this debate with somebody <laughs> that toi. it is not. Uh, and he, here's the here's the case that somebody can make. Up. First of all, the the uh, you have to right away anybody who's presenting it uh, as as amazing as it is, more than likely is profiting off of uh, off of a product that's related to it. So be careful of that. So if you're gonna if you're gonna read the science and the literature on it. Read the science and literature of somebody that's not attached also to to the product itself. Mm -hmm. So that's important that you do that. Yeah. And when you read all the literature that's a, around that movement, yeah, it's an incredible glute development movement. And and are a lot of people suffering from anterior pelvic tilt? Yeah, and I think that would be a great exercise to do to help counter that. So it's a great strengthening exercise. So long as you do it right. Right, exactly. Yeah. So long as you do it right, that can help address that. Is it one of the best things for building the glutes? Absolutely. So you can make a lot of cases for why it's amazing, but no, 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 no. Does, does it belong up there with overhead press, deadlift? You now, know. I want to add one thing to this, is that, and that is if an exercise specifically corrects an issue or an imbalance for you, that exercise becomes the most functional, Excellent. beneficial exercise. Excellent point. For you. Yeah. So to that argument, totally. 
a seated row could be the most important thing that you do. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like so So you, if you have an issue with hip extension, if your glutes aren't firing right. the way you sleepy want sleepy butt syndrome. Right. If it's underdeveloped, if that's something that if this if the hip thrust is the perfect exercise for your body and your movement patterns, then it does belong in the absolute what time. a what a great point because you're right if because I know people some people listening are like no that exercise changed, yeah, changed my life, my life. Yeah. yeah that's I right that it, no then. that's a hundred percent right and all the ones that you listed before step ups split stance you know lunges squats if your if your glutes aren't firing properly and you don't have good hip extension then barbell hip thrust could absolutely supersede those movements totally because of that reason yeah, so that is a very good point and we're speaking generally so generally speaking you know after training hundreds of people or thousands through the gym people that have come through my gyms um hip thrusts generally speaking just aren't as valuable for most people like a deadlift or like a barbell squat or a split stance squat but there are definitely people um where a barbell hip thrust is the most beneficial, valuable exercise. So at the end of the day, yes, we're giving you general advice, but you have to apply it uh, to yourself as an individual. And if you're somebody that lacks that hip extension, lacks that connectivity to your glutes, or let's just say you're into body sculpting and bodybuilding, you really don't care too much about function. You just really want to develop just the glutes and you have trouble connecting to them with barbell squats. Now it becomes an extremely valuable exercise. So I wanted to put that out there because... For sure, you know, we have a lot of listeners, and for sure there's at least five people listening who are like, hip thrust changed my life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they that very well may be true. Next question is from Janky Garage Jim. If you have horrible all-around mobility, should you focus on one area first and then move on to the next one once that's okay? Or is it better to do a bit on all the problem areas? I don't think that there is a wrong or right answer to this. Um, I think it's, it's before we go in and give our points here or what our advice, I think it's important to note that uh, whatever works for you is important. Um, personally, uh, the success that I've had with working on mobility has come from my, and with myself and clients has been focusing on like one or two things. The gross offenders. Yeah. Like it that's looks, usually my advice. Yeah. I look at the, the gross offenders and in, in, in my case, uh, was my lack of ankle mobility, was the lack of my hip mobility. Those are the two biggest things that uh, kept me from having a comfortable, deep, good squat. And so uh, I began work, and I, and I picked one or two movements that I, I felt the, the greatest change or improvement for those two areas and just fucking drilled those home like crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think if you – so when we talk about mobility training – we, sometimes we tend to separate it from uh, resistance training. So we think that there are different rules that yeah. apply to mobility training because it's not resistance training. The reality is mobility training improperly is resistance training. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the goal is a little different. The goal with mobility training isn't to build muscle and create you know uh, tons of tension through compound movements or whatever. More you're, stability and control. You're just trying to control and in, in, in direct uh, connection to muscles and to movements, but the same rules apply. So what are the rules with resistance training? Will you get better results if you train your whole body and do one set of an exercise for legs, one set for chest, one set for back, one set, and then go all through the whole body and then repeat that? Or do you get better results if you do all your sets for legs, then do all your sets for chest, then do all your sets for back. And the truth is, the there's more value, you get better results when you do one movement, one exercise, focus on that at a time. Now, the studies do show that the most of the gains that you get go to the first few exercises. That doesn't mean you don't get gains in the other exercises. It's just when we measure them, and, and studies will show this, if you squat at the beginning of your workout, you're going to get more gains on your squat than if you did your squats at the end of the workout. So the advice uh, would be the advice I would give to somebody if they said, hey, if I have a weak body part, should I you know, focus on that or whatever? Focus on, like Adam said, the gross offenders, uh, or I think Justin said that, focus on the, the big mobility issues first 
do all your stuff there. Wait till that's okay before you move on. Because going through the whole body, yeah, you'll it, still get benefit. But it'll it's- cascade. Like once you really do like pinpoint uh, whether it's like my shoulder joint. Like I just can't, uh, you know, I can't rotate a, a specific way, and like that actually like impedes on me lifting weights over my head. And so you know to gain more stability and, and control over that. Now that's that's building better movement patterns overall. And then the same, you know, whether it's my ankles or it's my hips that are affecting my knees, you know, something like that to where now I can work on squatting. My technique's going to get better. My movements overall are going to kind of form into these better patterns and then it's going to help my overall there, system. There's also a little bit of a difference between priming and mobility, although there's a lot of crossover. So like we have two programs. One is called MAPS Prime. One is called MAPS Prime Pro. Now priming is a little bit different. Priming is to set yourself up for the exercise that you're about to do. So I prime my body so I could get good movement patterns so I could perform a barbell squat better right now. Mobility work is really much more correctional. Like my goal with mobility work isn't necessarily to do the next exercise better. It's to correct a problem. It's a little yeah. bit more intense, a little bit more focused, and there's more work that's that's being done. So it really depends on how you're using this. If you're if you're just working the whole body, you can prime the whole body. Um, and that'll give you some benefit. Well, and I think this is a good question because you see a lot of like Instagram accounts and that are like mobility based that like you just see them doing like every body part, you know, right. everything like yeah. every day you have to accomplish like all these like crazy movements and it's gotten so out of control where, you know, for me, I, I, I enjoy mobility and that's something that I really brought in that, you know, had, had transformed the way that I worked out. But at the same time, like I'm sticking with like my three main ones and, and that's like the workout. Are, is where I get you know all the benefit. That's yeah. such a good point because I know that it's become a, a buzz term, and the the big pages like the big mobility pages are the the guys or girls that are like hyper mobile and like they every day they're posting a new cool mobility exercise, and because it's become a buzz a buzz term, people listening to the podcast, including our podcast, they see stuff like that and they're just trying to emulate all these different mobility moves yep. mm -hmm. when in reality, what will benefit you the most is to be hyper-focused on one or two moves yeah, that, that are very specific to your body. Like you have, you have terrible, let's say, you know, rotation in your shoulder, like doing handcuff with rotation is like such a great move. You don't need to go do some fancy lizard animal flow thing that you saw your favorite mobility guy or girl do, right. you know, because it looks cool and it's quote unquote good for you. You need to be doing the the one thing that is really going to have the greatest impact on your personal uh, mobility issues that you're dealing with. You know, it's funny you brought this question up too, because I just did a, a, a YouTube video that should go live real soon here. And uh, it actually was wasn't something planned at all. I was doing some I was doing some mobility work myself, and uh, Eli come walking out of the office, and he's like, "Hey, can I can I video what you're doing?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that, that's cool." And so he just he just off the cuff came over and just started videoing me and, and having me explain what I was doing. And one of the things that I was doing is I do this thing now where I walk up on the squat rack. I get all the way down into the deepest squat. I do a combat stretch. I drive my knees open and open my hips up. I retract and squeeze my shoulder blades together. And I, I, I tuck my chin and work on my... So I'm literally like addressing the entire... It's a combo. Yeah, it's literally like four... Now, what I explain in the video when he's talking or when he's uh, filming me is that this is the result of me working diligently on 90-90, on combat stretch at zone one, and the forward head stuff that we do. Was I work so much at that that I, I, can, I can connect really well. I know what I need to do. So now I can get down in a single move, you know, a single mobility move, which I think is a really cool uh, thing that uh, I do to warm up now. But I had to first do all the other, you know, boring ass single 9090 type stuff to get to that point. And that's the the what we're trying to explain is that, you know, just because you see me do this one cool move, like if you haven't done all the prerequisites to get to that point, it's kind of meaningless for you to try and just to attempt to do that. Like, you, if you have trouble just connecting to uh, ankle mobility, you're not going to do yourself any good by throwing shoulder and hip and you know neck mobility into it all right. at once you know you advanced yourself uh to that point so 
If you want to improve uh, con- more consistently and effectively, you're probably better off focusing on those specific areas of your body, picking the best movements and mastering those before you decide to add you know, lots of other things. Not to mention that, that's where you're going to see the greatest change too. It's not like you're going to do a mobility move and you're going to be like, wow, I'm just so much more mobile now. I did those two or three cool mobility exercises. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of consistency and frequency of doing a, a mobility drill that's trying to address the lack of mobility you have in a certain joint before you start to see serious change mm-hmm. or feel a major difference. So even for the psychological reason, it makes more sense to just focus on one area of dysfunction like Prime Pro, where Prime Pro, we, we go through every major joint in the body and you have a test and then you have moves that you should do to improve that range of motion in that joint. You're far better off. Like you'll go, most people will go through like Prime Pro and you know most people will probably fail almost all the tests because a lot of us, because we are seated and, and older, like we, we, a lot of us have dysfunction in all of our joints. So you go, oh my God, I have all these problems. I need to do all these moves. It's like, no, that'll get overwhelming. Like pick one, like Justin said, the, the greatest, you know, the, the gross offend, the, the greatest gross offender of all of them, and just like drill that home. Do that two, three, four, five times a day for a few minutes every day. And you will see after a few weeks, you'll notice a, a incremental change starting to happen already. And once you kind of make that connection, it's definitely psychologically a lot more motivating to see the change in progress versus doing all of these weird mobility drills and doing different ones every single day. And is it really helping? I think I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. Is it really alleviating this chronic pain? Am I getting any more range of motion? Really hard to tell. It's the same concept like Sal made the analogy to exercise. It's like the guy or the girl that goes to the gym and they do they fucking muscle confusion, you know, heavy squats and they come over and do high reps over here, supersets over here, low rest periods here, and they like throw the whole kitchen sink at a workout. Sure, their body might get changed and they might see some results. It's really hard to measure what's working the best for their body. So that's why I separate like one area that you need to work on, really get good at that and get better at that so you can see and feel a difference and then apply that and then add on. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Omnivorous Adam. You guys talk about the importance of eating high-quality, healthy food, yet besides Doug, we rarely hear any of you speak about what you cook at home. What's your favorite go-to dish that you cook for yourself at home? It's mainly because it's a lame conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you eat, bro? Yeah, yeah I'd like uh, to, I think that's. I think we've discussed before. Like, yeah, I'm boring. Uh, well, no, it's just that's the thing to do in the fucking fitness space too. Is take pictures of your fucking food every single day. Uh, yeah. I saw value in it when I was competing, so people could. I was tracking and I was measuring and weighing all my food, so people could see and I was listing my macronutrients, but. I think all of us, uh, I mean, I'll start, I can't speak, I'll speak for myself. It's it's pretty boring. Uh, yesterday, um, I had coffee, I skipped breakfast, mainly because I know that I wasn't moving very much. Uh, I didn't get a, or the uh, day before, I hadn't got a workout in, uh, so I didn't eat any breakfast at all. All I had was my coffee. Uh, lunchtime, uh, I went and met uh, with our friend Jordan Harbinger and had Luna. At Luna, I ate... Um, and Luna is a local, uh, um, you know, farm to table uh, Mexican restaurant that is here that we all love. And I got uh, steak. I got steak fajitas. Uh, I passed on the sour cream and the guacamole, and uh, I, all I had was the rice, beans, and the meat. Well, tasty stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I, <laughs> but here, I guess here, we're, what's good about this conversation is here's an example of how my eating changes day by day um, a little bit, but I'm not neurotic about it to where I'm weighing or measuring right now. I know my movement and my calorie burn and my training is significantly low right now. If I'm training hard and I'm consistent and I'm burning a lot, I'll, I'll enjoy the chips and guacamole. I'll have the tortillas with my steak fajitas. And I'll I'll in, I'll intake that extra three to five hundred calories because I know I can afford it. I would have had I would have got up and had a big eggs and bacon type of breakfast and probably a, a green juice to start my day off. Like that if I'm burning a lot, but because I'm not, I make these little subtle adjustments. I pass on the chips and guac. I don't eat the tortilla. I skipped breakfast that day. So, but I mean, our I feel like our food isn't that 
weird or different than anybody else. Dinner time, I had, okay, here's another example. Uh, Katrina, we make uh, ground turkey tacos a lot. Uh, when I know that I'm not burning a lot of calories, I opt out on the tacos and I make taco salad. Why do I do that? Well, when I have tacos, I could literally, those, those little taco shells, I can crush eight to 10 of those things. And you know what? When I'm burning 4,000 plus calories, I don't give a fuck. I'll eat mm -hmm. the tacos. It's ground turkey tacos. It's got some lettuce and salsa in it. We just sprinkle a little bit of cheese in there. It's really not that bad for me to intake that much calories. But I, instead of that, what I do is make a taco salad. And so she takes two of the taco shells that I would normally eat eight to 10, and I make a taco salad instead of having tacos. Mm. So, I mean, that, that was my day yesterday to give you an idea of how I eat. And that's a pretty regular kind of day for me. And, um, you know, there's things that I, I add in there or change. We rotate meats a lot. So we eat a lot of, uh, we eat a lot of bison the day before that. Um, we had uh, bison and sweet potato. Uh, we eat a lot of veal. Uh, there's this, uh, this quinoa pasta uh, thing that we like, like it's a pasta type of noodle, but it's made out of like quinoa or some shit like that. It's higher protein, uh, low, uh, lower glycemic. And uh, we have that with uh, um, uh, bison or veal. Uh, I do a lot of chicken thighs and that, that one's a boring one. Chicken thighs, uh, rice, and some sort of a green broccoli. Asparagus is normally a go-to for me. Um, you know, the, I, I don't think that I'm eating it at Brussels sprouts. I eat a lot of those. So on a day when I want to stay away from eating a ton of calories, I'll have just a giant bowl of Brussels sprouts with a little bit of bacon, the, the recipe that Doug shares. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that to me, that's a pretty normal yeah. kind of like rotation of food. What about you guys? Yeah, you're right. It's boring. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, that's so I, I mean, maybe. No, you know, no. I was just watching the paint uh, peel. No, well, no, here's the deal. People want to know because we, you know, we represent, you know, fitness and health. Here, here's the thing with food, okay? Food. Food has a lot of different kinds of value, okay? And and one of the main ones that we understand in the fitness space is the physiological value. Proteins, fats, carbs, calories, ma ma micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients that may be in plant, all these wonderful things that are healthy for your body. But there's other values to food. Like I was in I was just in Maui, okay? I'm in Hawaii. I'm on vacation. And I always laugh because when I'm doing this, I'm like, I wonder if there's any Mind Pump listeners watching me eat right now. Because you know what I'm eating for breakfast? Loco Moco. You know what Loco Moco is? It's a, <laughs> it is a local Hawaiian yeah. breakfast dish. Fried, fried beans no, and, it's, it's, and it's, eggs it's, over the uh, rice. Yeah, so yeah. it's rice yeah. with two eggs over easy, uh, a hamburger patty, and this oh, brown gravy uh, that is you know a part of Hawaii. Or I'm having Spam mm. eggs and rice. I never eat spam, but why am I eating? I'm in Hawaii. Fuck, I'm gonna. The value of the food at that time is to complete the the for me at least. It could be different for for other people, but for me, it's to complete the experience of being in 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 Maui. I had shaved ice uh, in Maui where they shave the ice and they put the you know the the fake colored sugary stuff on it, and I'm enjoying myself. But I also had lots of fish. Why did I have lots of fish? Again, I'm in Hawaii. There's a lot of fish there that's caught that morning, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna eat that afternoon. You know, I'm eating mahi that the dude just brought in this morning, yeah. and it's on my, you know, my fish tacos. Well, so you, if you you have that kind of relationship with food, and you understand its true values, and then you understand the kind of value that you need, um, you're gonna be okay. Most of the time, most of the time, the value that I place on food is like what Adam's talking about. I'm eating things that are healthy for my physical body, but not always. Not always. Sometimes I'm I'm gonna enjoy certain foods because that at that moment that's what the that's the value that the well, food is. I think bringing the me. the important thing, and when Justin gets to his turn, you, you, what you're gonna find with cheese us, and barbecue sauce, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the thing that is that's important, and, and even bacon. like listening to you, Sal, and kind of like uh, replaying what I was saying about the, the thing that I think that the best takeaway that somebody can get from probably us talking about our nutrition is that. We're not neurotic like ninety percent of the fitness space. No, we used to be. Yeah, I used to be neurotic about right. my food, and it and, wasn't healthy. Uh, and at the same time, although we're not neurotic to where we're we're weighing, measuring, and doing all those things, um, I'm not saying that there's not value to that. Like if I was in a place in my life right now where we were, let's say we had a bet, like you know who is going to fucking build the most muscle right now, or let's get on stage in six months. Like you bet your ass, like the scales Ooh. coming out. I'm fucking prepping every single week. I'm carrying my food around. I'm getting serious about if I'm going to make the greatest change in the fastest amount of time, there's going to be no room for error. 
But in my life right now, that's just not a priority. I don't give a shit. And I don't give a shit about anybody who's going to judge me if I'm fucking 14% body fat compared to 9% body fat or 6%. I don't give a shit about what somebody well, thinks that, right see, now. See, that's the key when you when you, when you you start to understand the, all the values of food and you understand the values that you really need and you have a good relationship with yourself, um, then you're, you're going to sit somewhere that's healthy. You're going to sit somewhere at a body fat percentage that is, is healthy. You're going to have decent strength and performance. It's something that you can have forever and long term. Are you going to be shredded? No. I don't think there's very few people that could be shredded without having to measure and count everything. So if you want to be super, super diced, you're probably going to have to do that. But here's, a, here's a, you know, some news break for you. Being shredded all the time is not healthy typically, physically or psychologically. So at some point, if you want to have a healthy life and you want to do this forever, at some point you have to really understand the total values of food. And it's a stress, it's more of a stress fee free way of eating. Where again, I was on vacation, I'm not freaking out because I'm eating shaved ice, locomocos, and you know, whatever. I'm it's part of the experience. Then when I get home, I'm not on vacation anymore. I don't need to like, you know, complete the, you know, the value of, you know, my hometown. I live here all the time. So I'm gonna eat foods that are physiologically healthy for me most of the time, again, because that's the value. Look, I had dinner at my mom's house last night. Now, this is a Sunday dinner. We had a lot of family over. I actually posted a video of it on my Instagram. It was about 20-something people there. So I'm going to enjoy the moment. So what did I do? I ate pasta with sauce, ate some sausage and some meatballs. My dad made this chicken dish that we had, and we had some vegetables and some salad. Um, I had some bread because you know my aunt brought some fresh French bread. Because at that moment, the value of that food wasn't necessarily the physiological value of getting me shredded or fueling my body for a crazy workout. The value was I'm enjoying my family, mm. and we're, by, we're, we're we bond over food, and we're having great conversation. Right, let we're me get mine out together. before this goes for an hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides like cheese and you know barbecue sauce and all that shit, you guys you know make fun of me for. Um, <laughs> I do like actually pay attention on some level. I'm not neurotic, obviously, uh, but uh, I, I do try to make sure that I, I don't eat processed food. That's one that I know right away is going to affect me in, in a negative way. So anything that's going to like affect me to where I'm, I'm going to feel the physical uh, ailments that it's going to present me. And like, this is where too, where some elements of like grains, glutens, things like that, that I'm in, in, that's been in my diet before that I've like really kind of pinpointed that this causes me at night to get up because I have like bad acid reflux and I have like these other, you know, gastrointestinal issues. Like I'm going to try and steer clear of mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so, and then the other thing is like in the mornings with breakfast, like I'll, I really try to eat breakfast. I went so long not eating breakfast that I, I feel like that really had a detriment on my metabolism. And so I've tried to incorporate that and bring that back. And then I'll, I will actually like, that's one of the things where I, I manipulate a lot based off of my activity. If I'm more active, I'm going to, you know, make sure I'm really getting that breakfast. And, and when I'm less active, I'm not. And so my carbs are really just, uh, you know, potatoes and, and rice. And like, that's where I'm sprinkling that in, you know, based off of like, you know, how much, uh, I'm working out doing things. And otherwise I'm really just trying to stick with, with vegetables and, and meat as much as I possibly can. And then enjoying, you know, company. If I'm with somebody, I'm not going to be super like anal about what's in front of me other than like, I might not eat as much of it, uh, because I'm like, ah, oh, shit this is going to kill me, you know, like, or, you know, sometimes I might be all in and, you know, like that might happen. And it's just like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, you brought up the breakfast thing. You know, they just had a study that came out, um, actually sent it to Max Lugavere, um uh, for him to share, that people who eat earlier in the day increases the amount of calories that their bodies burn. Mm -hmm. So calories in versus calories out still, of course, applies. But you can change the calories out by the timing of your food. And they're actually found in the study that eating your meals earlier in the day increases the amount of calories your body burns uh, processing the food it's pretty logical yeah. when you eat it in the evening so um, and it's not a huge difference it's not going to be a game changer for for a lot of people but it is a difference kind of interesting yeah next question is from Jamil a144 are massage guns good for recovery or a waste of money you know so I'm gonna use there, there aren't a lot of studies on mas massage they guns, feel good I know that much. but they, there are studies on massage so I'm gonna put them in the same category as massage and they, they, they actually have studied massage to see how it affects uh, the body 
um, you know, post-exercise? Does it actually speed up recovery? Here's what they found. They found that massage does reduce the infl- inflammatory markers that, are pr- that, that tend to be produced from exercise. So can they speed up recovery? Yes, but here's the caveat. They might actually re- reduce the muscle building signal that the exercise then sent. This is the catch-22 with things that speed up recovery. Things that reduce inflammation also simultaneously blunt the muscle building or adaptation signal because inflammation is what signals the body to adapt. So theoretically, massage could benefit you or it could hurt you depending on where you're at with your training. If you're over the line, if you're training so hard that you're over the line of overtraining, then massage may bring you back to the point where now it's an optimal amount of inflammation. If it's not, if you're not at that line, it may bring down inflammation to the point where it actually reduces the signal uh, that your workout just sent. So it really does depend a lot. I don't have a ton of experience with massage guns, though. I don't know if you, do you guys, you guys I use mean, a lot of them? I they, mean, they fall in the same category as foam roll for me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it, if it if it helps you get into um, a mobility move or get into a stretch, uh, there's value in it. Um do I think that a majority of people need to invest in the two hundred something? I think they're like two to four hundred dollars for some of these things. I know that some people have made some hacks where you put it on like a yeah, dr- you just get a drill and like put like yeah. a, a different attachment on it. Yeah, mm. then you look like a weirdo like with a sex toy in the gym <laughs> or whatever. Like that. Yeah, so yeah, I, mean, I think I've seen those. Yeah, so. <laughs> why are all the videos in slow mo? Have you seen that? Yeah. It's always like on some girl's butt and it's like back, 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 yeah, back, yeah, yeah, great selling Anyways. point, right? Yeah, so I, I mean. If you've got the money to uh, have things like this, like, I mean, I, I, I don't own one. Okay. So let's just, I think that's important to know. You're right? married to one, isn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Your girl's a massage therapist. <laughs> She'd be offended, I would think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, she would be, actually. She gets really pissed when I use like massage tools at all because uh, she's got the magic hand. So, uh, yeah, you know, I if you got the money to have something like this and you're trying to work on your mobility and, and stretch more and do that, the thing that I always worry about with things like this, and th- and again, foam rolling is included in this. Your work is not done there. All these tools, both those tools, foam rolling and these guns, give you temporary relief so that you then can do the work you need to do to change uh, the root cause of the issue. If you just do the Theragun to release some of the tension and then you go about your normal behaviors, you're not really doing anything. You're mm-hmm. just kind of putting a Band-Aid or putting a hole or a finger in the hole in the sinking boat. Like you've got to do something about what's causing the hip pain or causing the knee pain or causing the low back pain. Even though these guns give you the temporary relief or the foam roll gives you the temporary relief, doesn't mean that it's technically fixing the issue. All it's doing is giving you temporary relief. What you then need to do is address what got you into that position. So uh, I think it's a great tool. I think if you've got the money to have one in your bag it, and, it, and it promotes you doing more mobility and corrective work, fucking by all means, invest in one. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the answer, and nor do you need it in order to address the issues that you potentially have. Absolutely. I, I think it's a, like a novelty that's nice. You know, like you feel good from it. It's just like, I mean, it's nothing new. It's like those, those massage wands and chairs and attachments. Like we've had these yeah. from infomercials forever. Ever, like just trying to like sit there and feel like a massage, you know, something vibrating or, or, or like making not like like going up and down my back, like that feels great. But at the same time, it's just you know it's temporary. So you yeah. gotta look at it like that. Yeah, I mean, and what they do really is they it's kind of like hacking the the CNS, mm-hmm. right? It's, it sends a signal to the CNS. It's like those vibrating plates. You know, when you when you use those and you get into a stretch and you can only go so far, stand on a, a vibrating plate and you'll find that you'll be able to go a little farther. It's literally confusing the CNS and, and it, the CNS starts to relax and, it allow, and the muscles then allow for more range of motion. If you use them properly, uh, like what Adam was talking about, they can be very valuable. But if you just use them as Band-Aids, they're not going to benefit you. They're just going to give you that temporary relief. Um, and then when that temporary relief is gone, the root cause is still there. And the pro- In fact, I could possibly even see how these tools may actually cause more problems for some people because it allows them p- to prolong the, the 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 root problem even longer. No different than taking, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it masks uh, the symptoms. Yeah, like a taking a painkiller. You yeah. know, like if, if no, if, it's, this is a good point. Yeah. This is what happened to me with my IT. So I used to foam roll like 
or like every day before I played basketball or do things like that. And because I noticed- You big, pushed it further and further. Yeah, I just kept, and I never addressed why I was having these issues until way later did I really dig into like what was going on because it would, it'd give me temporary relief. I'd then be able to play basketball and I'd be pain-free while I was playing basketball, but then I'd come right back. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, I can't, I, I, when I squat, my hip hurts, but if I foam roll, I can keep squatting. You're not figuring out why it hurts in the first place. You're just allowing yourself to squat more, and then what will end up happening is whatever was causing the problem in the first place, it's going to get worse. So it all depends on how you use these. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides, books, and resources. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.